Uh, hello. hello. Before we start, let's pray. Good morning, God. Um, we just want to talk to you about today's service. Lord, you're a wonderful God. And it's just so wonderful <coughs> that you give us this gift of life every day, a new mercy every day, to enjoy all these wonderful good gifts around us, Lord. But Lord, if there's anyone here who feels a bit downtrodden or discouraged, Lord, give them that boost that they need today. Give them that bit of encouragement that they need. And Lord, surprise us. Surprise the socks off us today, Lord. Lord, let faith be present here today. Lord, help us to be aware of your presence as we pray to you, as we worship you, as we dwell together as your body. Thank you, Lord, for being our friend. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, I just want to start off with a, a Bible passage from Mark 11, verse 20 to 26. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed, be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. You will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Thank you, Lord, for faith. So there's a few thoughts to ponder um, today as we contemplate this gift of healing. But uh, before we get to that part of the service, let's spend some time in worship now, worshipping our God. Please feel free to sit and stand we sing our first few songs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
please feel free to pray as you feel led. Lord, I was hearing on the radio this morning about the experts are saying what looks like is happening in Ukraine and Russia in the next few weeks and days and months. But Lord, you know. You know all, Lord. I pray you'll stop those who are trying to do evil things and kill young people and encourage the peacemakers. Lord, your words say, blessed are the peacemakers. Raise them up, we pray, in that situation. Blessed are they, indeed, as they are successful in their enterprise of peacemaking. Thank you for them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the acts of kindness that are being seen for the Ukraine people, for the hope that they receive as they cross the border. It's amazing, Lord, the welcome that they receive, that they are valued and cared about. And I pray that us as a country, Lord, would respond in the way that you would respond. That, Lord, that we would be welcoming and would we be, be there for them, those acts of kindness. Father, I just thank you for all those that greet those that are crossing these borders. Mm. Thousands of people crossing these borders. Thank you for those individuals. The first person they see as they cross is a smile and a welcome and a hug. Mm. Thank you, Father, for those small acts of kindness. Continue, Lord, to, to work your will and your, your plan through this, Father, I pray, because you are sovereign over all. You see and you will act. Father, thank you that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. Lord, I just thank you that throughout the world, Christians are praying for this situation, Lord. And there's a witness of miraculous things happening, um, which might seem like coincidences to other people, but we know it's your hand at work, where small amounts of food are tripling um, and just, just feeding so many people, just as it was in your, your day, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the, these amazing stories that are coming out. Father, we pray that these people will witness that these, these miracles. Lord, bless those people in Ukraine who are, that have to stay there, that are staying there. Father, we pray for their protection. And we pray that um, Putin's mind will be changed miraculously. So we just, we just, we told to, you encourage us to pray for our enemies, Lord, and he is an enemy because he's against everything that you stand for. Oh, Father, we do pray for that man, that you will have your way with him and his government. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we just lift up. What can we do but pray, but thank God that you are there, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you are there and you will reign. And I just thank you for what is going to be so many witnesses of your goodness and through the people that are on the ground. Lord, I just thank you. What? And I'm so glad that we have prayer because we know that you're here. Amen. Yes, thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us today. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, just before we move on to the time of testimony, um, we do have something to celebrate this week because it's Roger and Shirley's anniversary on Thursday. So many congratulations. Can I have a word? Yes, of course. I won't stop and tell you about everything that's happened in our married life. <laughs> I'll tell you at coffee time if you're really interested. Um, yeah, we've been married 60 years, so it's our diamond anniversary this week, and we just want to testify to God's goodness to us through all that time. Um, and I won't give any advice out either, but I will turn, <laughs> I will turn to God's word. Uh, 
In our Bible readings, we go through books of the Bible and we go through on Sundays the Psalms, so we go from one to the end. And today we got to 37, and it's a really long psalm. So <laughs> I'm not reading all of this, but these, these verses um, <coughs> came through to me particularly. Keep trusting in the Lord and do what is right in his eyes. Fix your heart on the promises of God and you will be secure, feasting on his faithfulness. Make God the utmost delight and pleasure of your life and he will provide for you what you desire the most. Give God the right to direct your life. I think those words are wonderful and my mind does go back to our reception and after we finish eating, you know, you have the speeches and whatnots. And um, we have the traditional speeches, but also members of our church then, there, um, they stood up and prayed for us. And I really want to thank God that all their prayers have been answered. You know, Whenever we've moved around or been to different places, settled in different churches, we've always found true fellowship, true love, and being able to serve in whatever way we can. So thank you, Lord, for answering those prayers. Excuse me, not coming up the top there. I find it to bother you. We never to have a prayer for the healing is, but my, my prayer will be for healing, but it will walk properly with no pain. So perhaps the next time you better walk up to the front. Hallelujah. But um, yes. we'll see. But um, just to emphasize what Shirley said that God has not forgotten over so much. On our, we stayed, our first home was in Bridport in Dorset, and that's where we had our honeymoon from. We moved there straight down there after the wedding. And just show that God has cared for us. We, went, we had a short honeymoon and we went down to, to, to Tolkien on one day. On the way back, we picked up a hitchhiker. And there was a big sort of grey, this, this sort of red eyed dove thing that I was driving at the time, charging on the road. He said, Be careful, there's a corner ahead. And if you haven't said that, I've been straight over the edge. <laughs> that would have been the end of us. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, a complete stranger said, Be careful, there's a corner ahead. <laughs> just stop me. God, God cared. Who he was, or how he was going to say that, I don't know. Well, I think he'd be a bit, he'd be, I think he'd be a motorcycle, he'd be a motorcycle or something. But he'd do the road. But well, after that, after we went to, we had, we had we spent two and a half years down there. We went to, it all happened in Sussex, we spent ten years down there. And um, that was a great time. We had a sort of, sort of revival amongst the church down there. We, Ish, Ishmael, the children's worker, was sort of started in that time. Then we left Littlehampton and we came to Banbury. And we've been stuck here ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God, have his, his guidance over the years and God for us. Thank you. Well, before I let others share, um, I would like to read a Bible verse over you and to pray for you. Um, the verse that came to mind was Isaiah 60, um, verse 1 and 2. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and the deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you. His glory will be seen upon you. And um, Roger Shirley, when I think about everything you've done for this church and what God has done through you, I really feel like the Lord's light does shine through you. And uh, it, I mean, I find this couple so encouraging, and they've encouraged me through my walk of faith. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for Roger and Shirley and for their servant hearts over the years, Lord. Lord, I thank you for your presence upon their lives. And Lord, I thank you for the protection that you've shown to them over the years, and how you've lovingly cared for them, Lord. Lord, I pray for that continued protection, for the continued outpouring of your grace and care upon their lives, Lord. We thank you for Roger and Shirley. Mm -hmm. Bless them, Lord. Mm -hmm. Bless them with your faith, hope, and love. Mm -hmm. Bless them with your grace, mm -hmm. peace, and joy. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We'll get to the healing later. Okay? Oh, yes. Oh. Right, um, 
Would anyone else like to share anything? Yes, John Taylor. Mm -hmm. A special day tomorrow. You all forgot yes. 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 And his love and marriage, this section. So, Adam and Eve had an ideal marriage. He didn't hear about all the men she could have married, and she didn't have to hear how well his mother cooked. <laughs> and this Barbara Streisand said, Why does a woman work for 10 years to change a man's habits and then complain that, she, that he's not the man she married? <laughs> Anyway, I've been giggling all morning, it's brilliant. Okay. <coughs> well, let's, let's see happy birthday to you for tomorrow. My apologies on that, I have the wrong day. So let's sing happy birthday to John. Happy birthday to you. Father, he so faithfully serves you in all sorts of ways. Thank you, Father, that he serves us here. And we give thanks for John today. So, Lord, may you have a wonderful birthday tomorrow. And may you have a blessed time and a blessed week. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. such an encouraging testimony and it was forwarded to me by a friend and she says our friend Jill sent this testimony from YWAM Ukraine that's youth with a mission for the last three days there's been a storm raging on the Black Sea it has been so ferocious that Russia's naval ships have not been able to dock at port also just yesterday my husband, Ruslan, got a phone call from a maternity ward in a small town just outside Kaviv. Yeah. Sorry. That had been destroyed from the bombing. The maternity ward was in desperate need of all supplies and gave him a list. He took the list, walked out of the door of our building, and all of a sudden the truck pulled up outside. Out jumped a group of Norwegians who had come over from a Wyrom base in Romania. The van was full of humanitarian aid, including every item that was on the list from the maternity ward. Ruslan was able to direct the supplies to exactly where they were needed. I was just talking to a co colleague, and they are feeding 150 people a day right now at their base. They are talking about how eight kilos of macaroni is feeding 150 people. Food is being multiplied. These stories is, are what has been lifting our spirits. It is the support of prayers of the body of Christ around the world that are making the difference. This is such a time as this, as in Esther 4.14. Moment for the Russian and the Ukrainian people, but really for the world. Our God is awesome. We pray on. That um, story about the storm, it reminds me of a story I heard about when the Spanish Armada was coming against <coughs> England. Yes. And I think England prayed, and suddenly a storm brewed up, and all the ships got smashed on the rocks or something. 
So God is protecting people. Um, but like I said, we just need to keep that um, whole situation covered in prayer. Prayer really is the powerhouse of the church. So on that note, let's uh, stand or sit as we sing My Jesus, My Saviour. Um, I will be taking the offering round. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, please feel free to sit and or stand as we sing My Jesus, My Saviour. Blessing, 
broke it and gave it to them with the words, this is my body, it is for you. Do this to remember me. Later, he took a cup of wine, saying, this cup is God's new covenant, sealed with my blood. Drink from it, all of you, to remember me. So now, following Jesus' example and command, we take this bread and this wine, the ordinary things of the world, which Christ will make special. And as he said a prayer before sharing, let us do so too. Lord, as we take this bread, we remember that you are the bread of life. You feed our souls, you nourish our hearts, and you give us sustenance to run the race before us. As we break the bread, we feel the softness of your love for us. We smell the fragrance of the grace you release afresh each day. We thank you with all our hearts for the great price you paid when you were crucified on the cross for us. Just as the yeast has caused this bread to rise, you rose again, triumphant over death, as Lord of Lords and King of Kings, forever in our beloved Saviour. Let us now eat this bread and be thankful. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I will serve the bread. Um, take as you receive uh, the bread. Bless you. pray for the wine. Lord, as we drink this wine, we remember that you are the giver of life. You are forgiveness. You bring deep peace to our souls, and your love flows within us. As we drink the wine poured out for us, we see your sacrifice poured out for us. We notice the depth of your goodness the pain you suffered for us. We dwell upon the intricacy of human life that you created and the price you paid to set humanity free. Yet just as the tombstone rolled away 
to unleash the risen Lord. Your light shines in our hearts now, extinguishing all darkness to release heaven's blessings upon us. Let us drink and be thankful. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I will now pass the wine around. Um, please retain the cup so that we can drink together at the end. It's a sign of one body in Christ, united together in the power of Christ's gift for us. Let us drink and be thankful. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we praise you for this heavenly banquet that you have so freely given us. Thank you that we carry in our hearts the riches of this eternal goodness. May we pour it out wherever we go, lighting up the darkness with truth and love, speaking out hope <coughs> where there is despair, and weaving your un unconditional love into all we do. Send us out in the power and strength of the Holy Spirit. May we live to be all that you have destined us to be. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, mm -hmm. 
So you have the gifts of the Father, listed in Romans 12, the gifts of the Son, listed in Ephesians 4, and the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12. And the gifts of the Father in Romans 12, there to help us be established in the values of God's kingdom. The gifts of the Son in Ephesians 4, which talks about apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and all the rest of it. Those are gifts to help us to be established in the mission of God's kingdom, but I believe the gifts of the Spirit are to present the vision of God's kingdom, which, simply put, is love. Um, and if you look at 1 Corinthians 13, Paul the Apostle says, you're nothing but an empty, clanging symbol if you don't have love. So I'm reminding you of that today because the gift of healing, like all the other gifts of the Spirit, it is a vision of love. It is a gift that is meant to present the healing love language, if you like, of God. Um, but before I delve into more of this, um, and this journey of um, you know, discovering the love of God through the gift of healing, let's uh, briefly talk about what healing is. Um, healing, I believe, is not necessarily the absence of sickness, it's not necessarily removal of sickness. Healing is the restoration of life in a person's life. It is the operation of life taking place in someone. As Jesus said in John 10 verse 10, the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy, but I have come to give you life and life abundantly. And so um, this thing called sickness and disease, we know it entered the world as soon as sin entered the world in the Garden of Eden. And so we do know that sickness and disease, it's a fruit of the presence of evil. But healing is a fruit, it is a manifestation of the presence of God. And really, as we learn to operate in this gift, I would encourage you, be aware of God who is powerful and loving. How did I come across this gift of healing? Where have I seen this in my life? Well, and the first time I saw healing, the gift of healing in operation, was when this um, lovely kind couple here, Roger and Shirley, um, took me as a volunteer youth worker up to Soul Survivor in Staffordshire. Um, and we went with three other youth, didn't we? Zach, uh, Nick, Nigel's son, and Tim MacDonald. My goodness, it was an interesting start to that camping trip. Um, I remember being sat in their caravan, Roger Shirley's caravan, and watching a tent go flying across the camping field, landing in a tree, I think. I sat there and thought, oh, look, someone's lost their tent. Little did we realise it was one of our youth's tents. Um, I think it was Zach's, wasn't it? So that's how we started off Soul Survivor that week. Um, but little did I realise what I was going to witness that week. And um, we were in worship one evening, and I remember looking at the screen, this huge big screen they were projecting the words onto, and um, all of a sudden the, the guy next to me vanished, because at that point we had connected with this other youth group, 
We have become friends with this youth group. Well, just to give you a bit of context here, one of the youth in that youth group, he had had an operation on his hip. The operation had gone badly. The hip was messily banged up, I think. Uh, yeah, badly messed up. Um, to make matters worse, a couple of days prior um, to us meeting him, someone had dropped a kettle of boiling water all over his foot. So his foot was red, listed or something. So when we met him, he was sat in this chair in the, the camp, surrounded by two crutches and an ice pack on his foot. Not in good shape. Like I said, fast forward to this evening when I'm stood there worshipping. The guy next to me, Johnny, disappears. Um, had no idea where he had gone to. At the end of the service, this kid with the crutches was stood upright without his crutches. I said, what were you doing stood up? He said, God's healed me. I'm like, yeah, right. He lifts up his trouser leg. All the redness, blisters had gone. He was dancing up and down. And then, I mean, I'm cutting out a whole bunch of details here, but when he got home, um, he told his mum. His mum didn't believe he was healed. Um, they took him to the doctors. The doctor did an x-ray. Doctors did an x-ray and they could not believe what they were seeing. They had the x-ray of after the surgery of his hip completely messed up, and you could see the bones all higgledy-piggledy, because um, he, um, this lad had posted this on Facebook, and we were able to see this. So like I said, there was one of it all mashed up, and then there was the one the doctors took after Soul Survivor, where there was a perfectly shaped hip. Um, you can't really dispute that, can you, when you've got medical proof right in front of you? And so at that point, um, as I reflect back on that, I think what God was doing for me, the reason God had positioned me at that place, at that time, I think God was trying to show me the faith that was possible for healing. Um, he was trying to show me that nothing is impossible with God. And I believe the way you grow in the gift of healing and the other gifts is by, you, by using the gifts you already have. And so, you know, we've got faith. That's why we're here in church today. We believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. So I believe by using that gift, we can grow into other gifts such as healing. And um, last week, you may remember that Pete shared on faith, and uh, he shared that passage that I read out at the beginning today, which says, have faith in God. Um, and I really encourage you to grow that in your life, having faith in God. Because every single healing you see in the four Gospels, you see this atmosphere of faith. Um, you see a Jesus who is filled with faith. And there are things that work against faith, what I would call anti-faith, um, things that work against healing operating in our lives. And I'm going to be touching on that a bit today. Um, but yes, healing, it is a love language of God. It really is. Every single time you see Jesus coming up to someone, he's coming up to them as a friend. Um, who's taking care of all these details, part of these people's lives. Because when you find a sick person, um, very often it's not just the ailment or the disease that's affecting them. It, it's having a knock-on effect in their whole life. And so when you read about healing in the Bible, um, actually when you look at the word used for healing in Greek, it means saved, healed and delivered like a whole package. And so one passage I want to draw your attention to, if you want to turn with me, is uh, Matthew chapter 9. Now I'm going to read this out. There are a whole bunches of nuggets in here that really help us to see the heart of God through the gift of healing. Um, so Matthew chapter 9, I'll read out, um, first I'll read out verses 1 to 8. It says, so he got into a boat, crossed over, 
and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. And at once some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise, walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on the earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. And when the multitude saw it, they marveled and gloried God, who had given such power to men. Right there you see the whole package of healing being offered to this man. Uh, very often we, when we think of the gift of healing, we just think of someone being physically healed in their body. But very often when you see Jesus healing someone in the Bible, he's not just healing the physical ailment, he's healing the emotional side, the mental side. He's setting them free from the baggage that prevents a person from experiencing the love of God. And then later on in Matthew 9, I think it's in verse 22, there's another healing, and Jesus says, but, or it says, but Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. That word well, in that passage there, that is actually, um, the Greek word for that is sozo. And like I said, it means um, saved, healed, and delivered. Now I'm touching on this because I mention this word sozo, and a lot of people think of the inner healing ministry in Redding, California, where I studied for three years. No, um, sozo is a much older word that goes right back to the time of Jesus. It is, um, like I said, a full package of God's love. And that's what you get when God gives you a gift of healing. You know, when, when we go to minister healing to people, God doesn't just want to give a half measure, he wants to give the full vision of his love. And like I said, the gifts of the Spirit, I believe the purpose of the gifts of the Spirit is to pre present a vision of God's kingdom. Um, the gifts of the Spirit are meant to manifest the presence of God. <coughs> in people's lives. And that presence of God establishes an image of Christ, which is the image of love. And so right throughout um, the Gospels, we find Jesus touching on these themes. You know, the Son of Man came to save that which was lost. Again, that word save means sozo. So God is coming, Jesus is coming with this gift of healing to give people the full package of love. You can't go wrong if you remain rooted in love. But let's not forget the other things that are listed after the gifts of spirit in 1 Corinthians 13. There's obviously there's three things that are mentioned which I believe are vital for operating in the gift of healing, hope, faith and love. The greatest of these is love. But I want to touch on faith now. I've touched on love but let's touch on faith. Pete talked about faith last week, um, and he mentioned a man called Smith Wigglesworth who operated in the gift of healing. <coughs> Smith Wigglesworth, he also saw medically proven miracles such as cancer healings, things of that nature. But Smith Wigglesworth came out with these brilliant phrases that were rooted in scripture. And so he said, I, hang on, let me get this right. He said, um, you can never pray a prayer of faith when you look at the person in need. There is only one place to look, and that's Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, again, such a deeply rooted um, scriptural truth, because again, if you think about what it says in Hebrews, let's fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter mm -hmm. of our faith. 
So let's look at what can inhibit faith when we step out to operate in the gift of healing. Okay? So let's say, um, you know, I have someone in front of me who needs healing. If I walk up to that person and focus on their problem, focus on the circumstance, what's going to happen? The problem is going to be magnified because my focus is like a telescope. I focus on the problem, it gets magnified, doesn't it? When, when I take my telescope out into my garden at night, these tiny little specks of light, when I point my telescope at them, suddenly images become magnified. And in fact, um, I'm sure you've heard of the Orion's Belt. But when I point my telescope at that star, constellation, suddenly one of them becomes magnified into a green nebula of gas, which is absolutely amazing. Well, that's, you know, incredible, but think about that in terms of our focus, okay? <laughs> our focus, our beliefs are like a telescope, and so when we're stood in front of someone who needs healing, and we point our telescope, our focus, at their problem, at their circumstance, that's going to get bigger. Okay, you can't pray the, pray the prayer of faith, which is mentioned in John, uh, James 5, verse 15. You can't pray a prayer of faith if you magnify disappointment, if you magnify the problem, if you magnify discouragement, if you magnify the things that work against healing. But if I turn my eyes on Jesus, the Word of God, what's that going to do? It's going to magnify the one who has the power to heal. And also, that takes the pressure off of me, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Because if I'm looking at a problem, and this has happened to me so many times, I'm stood there with someone who needs healing in front of me. Oh, look at that problem. <gasps> what am I going to do? Big mistake straight away. My faith has been taken off of God onto me. We need to put our faith back in God. Have faith in God. Mark 11, 22. There was another man who struggled um, with this, um, you know, maintaining faith. And let me see if I can remember where this passage lies. I think it's in, yes, Luke 7, John the Baptist, right? Most of his life, he had this faith in Jesus as the Messiah. But look what happens when he gets put into prison and he focuses on his circumstance and his problem. Okay? So Luke 7, verse 18 uh, to... I'll keep reading until I find the nugget I want to come across. It says, Then the disciples of John reported to him concerning all these things. And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? When the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? And that very hour, he cured many of the infirmities, afflictions, and evil spirits, and to many blind he gave sight. Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things you have seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them, and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. And then Jesus goes on to say, you know, did you come to see a reed shaken by the wind? Basically, he was turning their focus back onto the power of God, having faith in God. But can you see, even this well-known man of God in the Bible, who we consider to be a pillar of faith, or a image of faith, John the Baptist, here he's in prison, he focuses on the problem, being in prison, he focuses on his circumstance, what happens? Disappointment, depression, discouragement start to invade his life. So what does Jesus do? Well, he creates testimonies of healing, of faith, so that he can give these to John the Baptist, to help John the Baptist to put his faith back in God. So let me share a few more testimonies of healing 
to help you put your focus back onto Jesus. So, um, yes, like I said, I saw that guy healed of his um, hip and the foot at Soul Survivor. A few years later, I have a powerful baptism in the Holy Spirit in Eastgate down in Kent. I come back here, and at that point, and some of you may remember this, who were here at that point, I witnessed um, supernatural healings for three months straight. One of them being, um, this is the first one I can recall, but there was a youth that came into the Norman Matthew School, because that's where we had the youth group at that point. Now this guy, he was not a fan of Jesus. Um, he wasn't remotely interested in Jesus. Um, but he came in one day limping with a very badly hurt foot because of a rugby injury, I believe it was. This youth who was not a Christian saw this and he pointed at me and said, Lee prays for healing. Went, what? What's going on? Like, it completely took me by surprise. So this youth with a bad foot, he walks off, but his sister and this other youth who was not saved said, no, go get prayer. He very reluctantly came over to receive prayer. Um, he puts his foot out in front of me. I pray a prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Uh, muscles, tendons, ligaments be healed. In Jesus' name, amen. Now here's the interesting thing. After that prayer of faith, I take my hands off his ankle, off his foot, and doubt begins to creep in. It, only a few milliseconds, and I thought, it's not worked. I raise my eyes to look at, at this youth. His eyes get wide and big. So I it's healed. So what do you mean? So can you test it out? Because I saw how he was limping. He runs up and down the hall and comes back to me. He was just amazed. The other, the youth who was not saved, he was also amazed. At the end of the youth group, both these youth followed me all the way to the top of my driveway so they could hear about Jesus. Just incredible. One week later, I go into youth group and this youth who had received the healing, who was not remotely interested in Jesus really, he came into youth group that week with seven Jesus wristbands around his arm, going from his wrist almost all the way to his elbow. Just incredible. But that demonstrates to me how the gift of healing is about love. Because that youth came to me to receive a healing for his foot. He got the whole package. He got a salvation in Jesus. I haven't spoken to him recently, but the times I have, I can sense there is still a faith there. And let's face it, an experience like that, that's not going to leave his life. I don't think he'll ever forget that. But can you see how faith and love, you know, when you have those things in place in your life, it creates this stage, this platform for healing to take place. And then let's not forget hope either. It is important to have an expectation, to believe that good things will happen. And I saw another week at healing a couple weeks ago when I was down in Romford in Essex. Um, I went into, I went to visit this um, lady who's 88 years old, spirit-filled Christian, um, and she had a gathering of um, there were five other ladies with her. I said, look, Margaret, I'm really sorry, but I have a Zoom meeting for a small group that I need as part of revealing the heartbeat of God. Um, do you mind if I go off and have a meeting with this small group in your office? She said, oh yeah. Then this crazy idea came into my head, which must have been the Holy Spirit. I said, oh, tell you what, why don't I get um, you and your lovely friends here to pray and prophesy over them and why don't I get my small group to pray and prophesy over you? And so we ended up with my laptop on her tea tray facing these ladies. One of the people in my small group needed healing 
like I think it was like allergies or cold or something, or one of the ladies in the room, and bear in mind, we have been sharing testimonies <coughs> leading up to this meeting, and you can feel the hope rising in the room, the expectation of good things to happen. And so this, um, this lady said, can I pray for your healing? She does. Nothing happened immediately, but by the end of the meeting, this uh, lady on the small group, she said, oh, I don't have a sore throat anymore. Oh, my sinuses have stopped being painful. Oh, I feel completely better. Mm -hmm. And you could see she was taken by a complete surprise because those things don't normally just clear up just like that. But I share that to show you how the presence of hope works towards um, helping to cultivate the gift of healing. So remember 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13. Now three things remain, faith, hope and love. The greatest of these is love. So when we operate in the gift of healing, we need to approach a person with a heart of compassion, empathy, love towards them. We need to approach them with faith, not focusing on the problem or the circumstance, we're fixing our gaze on Jesus Christ so that we can pray the prayer of faith. And then we need to operate in a hope, a hope that does not disappoint, a hope that sets expectation for good things to happen. I hope that encourages you. And yes, just remember, I am not a great healer. You are not a great healer. Jesus is. There have been a whole bunch of people throughout history who have operated in this gift of healing and they have all said the same thing. I'm not a great healer, God is. Yes. And there's one lady, Catherine Coleman, well worth looking into. She had a great and powerful healing ministry, saw many different kinds of healing. But when she was interviewed, she said, oh, I am not a great healer. But I'm in relationship. I have a friendship with the one who is. So in just a moment, and after the service, it doesn't have to be right now, but in just a moment, I'm going to pray for those of you who need healing. And if you're around, I'm going to ask you if you need healing. So put your hand up if you need healing. So folks, look around at the people who need healing. You've just been drafted in as um, God's ministers of healing and love. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, those who lay hands on the sick, the sick will, will get well. So if you're around these people, ask them if it's okay to just lay your hand on their shoulder. So go and do that now. Who needed healing? Okay, look around. <laughs> if you're around these people, just ask, can I lay, lay my hand on your shoulder? To go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to get you to repeat a really simple prayer. Now, remember, don't focus on the problem. Don't focus on the circumstance. Put your eyes on that Jesus who healed that guy, that lad from the hip, who healed that youth from his foot, who healed the cancer I was talking about, all the rest of it. Now repeat after me. With God in mind, with the awareness of presence of God in mind, just say, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. And if you want to go ahead now and just um, pray something in your own words over the person next to you, like I said, just pray a prayer of love over them. Remember, we are here to bless people with the love of God. So go ahead and pray over the people who need healing in this room right now. Pray the love of God over them. Thank you, Lord. May your presence of love come now, Lord. Let faith arise in this room, Lord. Fill us with hope, faith, and love in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. 
Keep your focus on God. He is the most powerful God in the universe. He is the great healer. We are not. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you are the healer. Thank you, Jesus. And after you're finished praying for them, ask them, um, is there any improvement? So go ahead now. The person, if you're praying for someone, just say, do you feel anything? Is God doing anything? I'll just give you a few moments to get a few responses. Now, there's, there's going to be a couple of things that happen here. Either the person is going to say, yes, I feel God moving. In which case, just continue to pray for them. Thank God for what God is doing. Because remember, Jesus healed people and one time he said, don't forget to say thank you to God. Or something on that line. So, if the person you're praying for is feeling the movement of God, thank God for it and continue to bless them. If the person isn't feeling anything, continue to pray. Because sometimes when you're praying for healing, it's like taking an axe to a tree. The tree doesn't fall down the first time with the first swipe of the axe. Sometimes you have to do that thing the Bible calls, which is persistence and endurance. And sometimes I've had the experience of not witnessing the healing until after the person goes home. And then I get a phone call or a text to say, you know you pray for me? Well, I'm better. Okay? So keep praying for the person who needs healing. And I'll give you a few moments just to continue to pray for them. Remember the love of God for the person you are praying for. Remember that God is the God who cares for you and I. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that all who would believe in him will not perish, but would have eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of the cross and the resurrection. Thank you for your gift of love, Lord. I speak your healing love over us right now. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Now, folks, it doesn't have to stop here. You know, um, God doesn't stop the moment I say Amen. I mean, in just a moment, we're going to sing our last song, How Great Is Our God. But that does not mean God wants to stop what he's doing. So when you have your cup of coffee and tea, you know, feel free to pray for people. It doesn't have to be complicated prayers. As long as you have faith in God and love the person in front of you, you can't go wrong. So feel free to sit, stand, lie down, whatever, as we sing, How Great Is Our God.
have faith in God. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, evermore. Amen. Well, bless you folks. It's lovely to see you all here. And I pray a blessing on the rest of your week. And yes, may God continue uh, what he has started today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Are you ready for coffee, tea? Yeah. Yeah. There's some cake. Mine cake. Don't forget cake.